Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and today I'm going to show you guys how to create some realistic reflections in 3ds Max using the V-Ray renderer. So before we start I'm just going to show you guys what you need to do this. So first of all you need a photo or image sequence or video um, of the environment where you're going to place your 3D objects and then secondly you need a spherical panoramic image um, like this one and I used an app called Photosynth on my iPhone so I'll put a link in the description where you can download this app for free and create some awesome panoramas like this one. Alright so in 3ds Max we're gonna go to our render setup and go down to our assign renderer and make sure your V-Ray renderer is selected. If you don't have V-Ray I'll put a link in the description where you can download a trial version. Next up we're going to open our material editor by pressing M on the keyboard or you can go to rendering material editor and click on slate material editor. Then we're going to right click, go to maps, standard, bitmap and we're going to select our photo or image sequence. Let's just select our photo, click on open and double click on that and then make sure it's set to environ and also the mapping should be set to screen. That's just going to be a reference image. Uh, you're not really going to render that out in the end. It's just going to be a reference um, so that you know where to place your objects, etc. in your 3D scene. Um, once you do your final render, you will composite your 3D objects with your um, actual video file in After Effects or Nuke or any other compositor that you use. Then we're going to right click, go to Maps, go to V-Ray and select V-Ray HDRI. This is going to be our reflection map. So let's just double click on that and then browse to your panorama. So I'm going to go to my folder and make sure you at the bottom it's set to all files so you can see JPEGs etc. And select your panorama image, click on open and then make sure your mapping type is set to spherical. Alright, so once you've got that, uh, we're going to just move this material editor to the side. Um, and then you're going to go to rendering environment and this is where we're going to tell 3ds Max to place our photo or image sequence as a reference background in our scene. So we're just going to connect the first one that we added. We're just going to add, drag that onto the environment map, uh, select instance, click OK. And it's always good to rename your material. So I'm just going to rename this one as background, or background reference. And the HDRI, let's call this uh, reflection. Right, so next up we're going to go back to render setup and I'm going to set my output size to HD and for now I'm going to make it 1 to 80 by 720 and then also very importantly if you right click on your perspective here click on show safe frames. Okay, one more thing to display that reference photo go to views, go to viewport background, show background and then also views background, viewport background uh, viewport background and tick use environment background then click OK. Then you should see your scene in your viewport. Next I'm going to maximize this viewport and what you want to do is you want to try and align your grid up to your floor. So I'm just going to try and kind of match it up like so. There we go, that's fine. And then I'm going to create a simple sphere something like that. Let's just move it up so it's just touching the grid like it's on the floor. Okay then we're going to open our material editor again and this time we're going to tell 3ds Max what to use as our reflection map. So with this open go to rendering render setup and then go to V-Ray uh, then you expand your V-Ray environment and then switch on reflection refraction environment override and then your V-Ray HDRI, just map that to there, select instance, click OK and that should be that for your reflection. Next up we're going to create a material for the sphere. So in your material editor we're going to right click materials, V-Ray and we're going to create a standard V-Ray material. Just going to minimize all those settings. And what we want to do here is your reflect color. Just change that down to a lighter gray, just to tell it to actually reflect a bit. And then we're going to drag this over to the sphere. And let's do a quick test render. 
Right, so as you can see, uh, we can actually start to see some uh, reflection, some realistic reflection inside the sphere. So I'm just going to select the sphere, go to the modify panel and change the segments to 64. So it's just a little bit smoother. Um, next up, we want to create a V-Ray light. So I'm going to go back to our other viewports and I'm going to go to lights, V-Ray, V-Ray light. And let's just create a big V-Ray light there. And in this scene, I know the sun was coming from behind. So I'm just going to try and move this light up a bit. Try to kind of get the same angle that the sun was coming from. Something like that. There we go. And maybe let's just move it over. Kind of something like that. Let's do another render. All right, so we can see there's the reflection. But what I want to change is I want to make sure that the ocean is on this side of the reflection and some buildings on this side of the reflection. So how you do that is we're going to go to our material editor again and let's open our reflection map. And then what you want to do here is your horizontal rotation. You can actually change this by changing this number. You can also change the vertical rotation. But for this, we're going to leave the vertical on zero. And we're just going to try and play around with our horizontal rotation. Um, and let's do a quick render again. To just, you just need to play with that setting to, to kind of change your, you can see the reflection is changing now, to get the right angle where the reflection is supposed to be. So now you can see the ocean is on this side, some buildings on that side. Best is just to play with that um, and then try and get that perfect. Next up, I'm going to go to Rendering, Render Setup, Indirect Illumination, enable that, also enable Ambient Occlusion. Just going to create some more realistic um, light bounces, etc. Change your first GI engine to Light Cache. Let's do another render. Okay, it looks like the light is a little bit bright, so I'm just going to highlight the V-Ray light and change the multiplier to around 20. Let's try that again. But now we've got a little problem here. You can actually see the reflection of the V-Ray light um, reflecting in the sphere. So to fix that, highlight your V-Ray light, go to your Modify tab, and untick Effect Reflections. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, let's just change the material color for the sphere. So I'm going to change this to, let's give it like a blue color. And one more thing, I want to change the light intensity. Let's make it, let's try 10. So there we go, uh, quite a realistic reflection um, on our 3D objects. One thing that's obviously missing is a shadow on the floor, but I'll show you guys how to do that in the next tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, give me a thumbs up if you like it, and if you want to be notified of any new tutorials, click the subscribe button. Right, see you guys next time. Cheers. Bye.